you very much indeed. Hello, I'm Alexander Armstrong, and a very warm welcome to this special Strictly edition of Pointless Celebrities, the quiz where the aim of the game is to find the most obscure answer possible. Let's meet this evening's Pointless Celebrities. <laughs> and couple number one. Hi, I'm Jackie Smith. I used to be a former Home Secretary, but I've been transformed into the person who was taught to dance by the King of Ballroom, Anton Dubeck. I'm Anton Dubeck. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you very much for coming. <laughs> and couple number two. Uh, hello, I'm Richard Coles. I'm Vicar of Findon. I'm a broadcaster. And in 2017, the raw physicality of my Paso Doble saw me out in round two. Hello, I'm Lyuba Mushtuk, and I'm a professional dancer on Strictly Come Dancing since 2018. Couple number three. Hello, I'm Annika Rice. Um, I'm known for liking a bit of a challenge, but Strictly possibly was a step too far. <laughs> <laughs> Hello, I'm Sonetra Sarka, and I'm an actress, and I did Strictly 2014, but I am thrilled to be here today with my childhood hero, Annika oh. Rice. Oh. <laughs> and finally, couple number four. I am Lauren Stebman, paratriathlete for Great Britain, and I did a little jiggling on Strictly in 2018. <laughs> <laughs> Hello, I'm Emma Weymouth. I am known for my work in food and fashion, and I was on Strictly in 2019 with Ali Ash, which was great fun. <laughs> Thank you all very much indeed. A very, very warm welcome to Pointless. It's lovely to have you here. That just leaves one more person for me to introduce. He'd go on Strictly in a heartbeat, but they said they couldn't afford the extra sequins. It's my Pointless friend. It's Richard. Hiya. Yeah. Hello, everybody. Welcome along, everyone. This is very glamorous, uh, isn't, isn't it? it? Not. Much more glamorous than our usual shows. Yeah. Normally, oh. it's like former professional footballers and it's all sort of yeah. tracksuits and yeah. flat caps, isn't it? But this is lovely. <laughs> uh, thank you all so much. A few people have been on before. Uh, sinetra has been through the head-to-head -head twice. Never made a final. Maybe third time lucky. Anton's been through to a head-to-head -head as well. Um, and Jackie is a trophy winner. Perfect. How'd you like that? Didn't win a jackpot, but perhaps this time. Uh, thank you very much. Well, as today's show is a celebrity special, all of our lovely celebrities are playing for a nominated charity. So we're therefore going to start off with a jackpot of £2,500. There we are. Right, if everyone's ready, let's play Pointless. Just so you know, the pair with the highest score at the end of each round gets eliminated. So all you have to do is keep your scores as low as you dare and everything will be great. Best of luck to all four pairs. No conferring. Good luck. Our first category this evening is... Monochrome nature. Can you all decide in your pairs <laughs> who's going to go first and who's going to go second? <laughs> OK, and the question concerns... Black and white animals. Oh, I see. Richard. Yeah, we're going to show you a series of pictures of black and white animals. We'll give you alternate letters of their names as well, but can you identify any of these animals, please? There'll be a board with nine animals on the way up and nine new animals on the way down. OK, so let's put that first image up, and here it comes. We've got... BDE, EDR, MLYNTPR, MGI, CLFRI, KNSAE, BAK, N... <laughs> W I E R F E L M R G A T L O A D M T G A T P N A K L E W A E. This is what people watch it for. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Jackie, welcome. Starting first. Now, someone's always got to end first as well. And uh, in 2020, that year when the standard was so high, you were the you were the first to exit. Is there a moment where you think? Oh, I get all my weekends back. I had had such an absolutely brilliant time dancing yeah. with Anton that I decided I was going to make the most of it. But I was a bit sorry that that brilliant adventure couldn't continue a bit further because he was gorgeous. And on the spectrum of, of politicians, I mean, from, from the Whittacombe to the Balls, uh, were you, <laughs> where, where do you think you were? Uh, well, they both actually, theoretically, did better than me, but they both voted for me as well. And for politicians, that's the key thing. Um, Jackie... The black and white animals. I am going to take a bit of a punt and I'm going to go for the top right hand and I think it is a Malayan tepir. A Malayan tepir, says Jackie. Let us see if that is right. Let's see how many of our 100 people said it. Ooh. It is right. 
That is a very good answer. Look at that, oh. down to ten. Very well done indeed, Jack. You ten. Beauty. Uh, yeah, it's a, it's a tapir rather than a tepia, but it would be a bad start to the show to uh, to, oh. to not give That's you that. That's sort of what I said. Yeah, oh, it is sort of, it's definitely sort of what you said. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> if, I, if I was Paxman, I wouldn't allow it. But listen, I think you've probably had enough of Paxman for one lifetime, mm. so, uh, so we're taking it. OK. I want to ask you about the accordion, Richard. Oh, I'm so glad. I've got one at home as well. Excellent. I was given one for my 40th birthday. I'm now 50. I'm afraid it's only been out a couple of times. Really? I, how is it? Um, uh, well, somebody left me an accordion, and so I took it up, and uh, actually it's been fantastic. I've secretly nursed an ambition to play the accordion for years. Same. But you've mastered the buttons, have you? Well, of course, it's three instruments, isn't it? There's a keyboard, which I know a bit yeah, about. Yeah, that you do that. know. Then the buttons, and then also the bellows technique as well. And if you That's snag true. your moves and the bellows, uh, you'll yeah, pay exactly. for it, I can tell you. Oh, that must be painful. Yeah. Uh, Richard, what are you going to go for? Uh, a bit of a punt. Um, bottom left. I think that might be a giant leopard moth. Let's see. Giant leopard moth. Is that right? Absolutely oh. right. Impeccably deduced. Ten is the only score we have at the moment. Oh. Wow! To two, Richard. Very well done. Well played, Richard. It's not entirely black and white. It's got a bit of blue and orange on its abdomen, but you can't ever see it. Thank you very much indeed. Now, Annika, stand-up comedy. I know. It all started because um, my kids, who were largely sheltered by my career, kept saying, what? Did you say you asked Maggie Thatcher to empty the contents of her handbag? Because, of course, they think I'm a lorry driver because they just saw me driving around in a truck when they were little. So uh, the, the comedy has come very easily because my life is in a series of the most eccentric episodes you can imagine. The last one I did at the Backyard Comedy Club, uh, my producer had secretly invited all these anarchists along who were children, little babies, <laughs> who were named after me oh. 30 years ago. <laughs> That's so all this, this row of anarchists were there. So it's all been very surreal. <laughs> but as I say, my life is basically a stand-up lunacy. Yeah, from just so to much end. material to mind. Yeah. Um, Annika, what are you yeah. going to go for? Well, out of the three quite obvious ones, I'm going to go for Killer Whale. Killer Whale says, Annika, let's see how many of our 100 people went for Killer Whale. It is right. Oh, it's um, a big pop killer one. 77 for Killer Whale. They're yeah, also known as orcas. They, uh, they sleep. They put half of their brain to sleep at a time. So half of their brain is always awake and then the other half goes to sleep. And their eyes as well. Wow. So they have one eye open and one half of their brain alert. And the rest so of the time... So half the night they're very artistic, and the other half they're very yeah. analytical. <laughs> the, the other half of the night they do all their admin. Yeah. yeah. That's, that's <laughs> hilarious. Isn't that a lovely idea? Wow, it's very clever. Thank you very much. Now, Lauren, I mean, you are fiercely competitive. I mean, that goes with the territory, and you have to be. Did you bring that competitive well, spirit well, actually, to Strictly? when I was on Strictly, I was partnered with AJ, yeah. and he is by far the most competitive person I've ever met in comparison to myself. So together we were sort of like, <laughs> I don't even know, that it's just explosive. I was going to say, I mean, because you know, for, for the viewer, it seems very collegiate and everyone's very supportive. And, but I mean, was it, I don't know, was it a bit fierce? If something went wrong in someone's dance, did a little bit of you go, ha <laughs> um, I don't think I ever thought that because when no, you stand- No, of course you didn't. No, I, that's honestly, an awful when thing you stand up there and you watch somebody, <laughs> I found it magical, because I wouldn't have said that I was one of the strongest dancers, so to watch other people, like, it was amazing. Oh, wonderful. This board's all yours. Do you want to talk us through the remaining black and white animals? Oh. So, badger. Then there's magpie, there's giant panda, and there's something wildfire lemur, and then I don't know whether to go for California kingslave for the snake. The letters fit, but I'm not sure if that's correct. So it could be... I doubt a snake would be a kingslave, but that's the only letters I could think would fit. I think I'm going to play it safe because I'd hate to just get a no answer. OK. okay I'm going to go okay. for magpie. You're going to go for magpie? Yes. Magpie. Let's see how many of our 100 people said magpie. It's right. Oh, wow, 70. 70. Now, I'm quite glad you didn't take the risk. I mean, let's look at the middle one. You brilliantly worked out the first two words, which are... Yeah. California and uh, and King, and then the, and then the last word snake snake snake. Oh. And you said I don't know how a snake would be called a snake. And I was thinking, exactly. Maybe it's not. So I knew I you mean, had it. You've yeah. literally done you've seen all the hard work <laughs> there. But uh, listen, I'm glad I'm glad you avoided it. We scored six points anyway. Uh, Badger would have scored you 67. Next to the Badger is 
Ida. 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 Like an Ida down. Would have scored you seven points. Uh, the giant panda at the bottom there. Would have scored 55. Really? And this last one is a pointless answer. Again, you can fill in some of the gaps. Well, so it's black and white. Black yeah. and white. <laughs> so black and white something uh, Lima. Lima. Black and white. If you look at it like it's beard. Oh, roughed. 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 Black and white roughed Lima. Very well done if you said that at home. Pointless answer. Very nice. Thank you very much indeed. We're halfway through the round. Let's have a look at those scores. Very well done indeed, Richard. Lower score of the pass is yours, two. Then we travel up to 10, where we find Anton and Jackie. Then we travel up to 70, where we find Emma and Lauren, and 77 for Sinetra and Annika. A little bit ahead there. Uh, we're going to come back down the line now. OK, let's put nine more pictures of black and white animals up on the board, and here they are. D-L-A-I-N, A-E-I-P-N-U-N, S-R-P-D-S-U-K, R-Z-R-I-L, R-C-O-N, G-E-E-A, Z-B-A, B-A-K-N-W-I-E, W-R-L-R, and H-L-T-I-F-I-S-A-C-W. There we go. Um, Emma, welcome Hello. to Pointless. <laughs> so how, how did you feel when you got the call? How did it happen, the, the, the call up for Strictly? I was at a wedding, actually, in Morocco, and the phone rang on a Monday morning. It was the most exciting thing ever, and I just danced around <laughs> the hotel um, with joy, because it was such good news. Wow. <laughs> That's very exciting indeed. Yes. Um, Emma, what are you going to go for on our board oh, there? And goodness. remember, you're, you're quite a high scorer at the moment. I know. This is very, very scary stuff. Let's say raccoon. You're going to go for a raccoon in the middle there. OK, let's see how many of our 100 people said raccoon. There is your red line. It's right. 74 for raccoon takes your total up to 144. Oh, that's uh, they've, got such, they've got such highly dexterous front paws, they can pick locks, raccoons. We would have found them unpicking locks to get into food stores and bins and all sorts very of things clever. in North America. They're clever, aren't they're they? They're clever. It's clever oh, to pick a lock. Clever. Thank you very much indeed, Richard. Uh, Sunetra. So when you were doing Strictly, how on earth did you fit it around your filming schedule? Because you were busy, you were on casualty. It was, it was crazy. I was filming in Cardiff, living in Bristol, training in Swindon, and then recording Strictly in London. So I had the bit... I mean, I was living on trains. But it's a full-on week, isn't it? The Strictly week. Madness. I mean, you, you, everyone rehearses every... Yeah. Minute they can in every day. I had to learn one dance in one day because the schedule what? hadn't helped me out as much as it could have. Because I don't think it expected me to get to week ten, so <laughs> casualty and just started me working again. And I had to learn this one dance in one day, and that was a killer. Sunetra, what are you going to go for? Oh. You're on seventy-seven. If you can score sixty-six or less, I am going to go for black and white warbler. Surely, I mean it's even warbling. As a clue. I, I hope it warbles my way. Uh, let's see, here is your red line. Can you get below that with black and white warbler? It's right. You're through. And it's a lovely low score as well. Look at that, Sinatra. That's amazing. Down he goes to seven. Taking your total up to 84. <laughs> well played, Sinatra. Very nicely done. They're, they're incredibly um, aggressive, black and white warblers. They protect their territory. I mean, only from other birds, not from... They wouldn't be... And they, they fight through the medium of song. Yeah, exactly. That's nice. Yeah, like, yeah. it's essentially a rap battle, but for yeah. birds. Thank you. Uh, now, Luba. Hi. Welcome. Thank Good you. Job. Now, you started in competitive dancing. I mean, yes. Competitive dancing. I imagine that competitive dancers are... I mean, they're the sort of the very, very upper echelon of, of professional dancers, because you presumably can spot other competitive dancers. Well, yes, of course. Competitive dancing is very different to, to television, to Strictly. It's obviously yeah. a, a very different story. But um, I've been very lucky to do competitive career, do theatre, and now I'm on Strictly Come Dancing. That is my dream came I mean, true. It's kind of a mix of everything, because it's a bit theatrical and it's competitive. Yes. But presumably yes. it means you know, what all the, you know what judges are looking for, essentially. I do. I do know. But then at the same time, you know, you have audience at home who want to enjoy and be entertained. So you kind of yeah. need to mix... Yeah, Both the of those things. Uh, Luba, what are you going to go for? You're on two. You're, it doesn't matter what you score, by the way. Yes. Even well, if you score 100, you are through. Well, I will just go with uh, Dalmatin, because I like it, and um, I know it, so I go with that. Dalmatin or Dalmatian, I'm going to say, but, but Dalmatin. Do you say Dalmatian? Yeah. I say Dalmatian. I'll say Dalmatin. Oh, okay. thank you. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Thank you. There you are. <laughs> uh, Dalmatian, should we see if that's right? Uh, no red line. You're already through. 
Down. Matin is right. That Yay. goes down to 67. That takes your total up to 69. Very well done indeed. Lowest combined score so far. It would be lovely if it scored 101, wouldn't it? Oh. Impossible, but lovely. Yeah, nice. Thank you very much indeed, Richard. Now then, Anton. How's it been? Because you, you, you've done a couple of weeks of judging. Yeah. You had to. You you filled in for Motsi. Yeah. And uh, how did you find that? I enjoyed it enormously, actually. I had, a, I had a great time doing it. My struggle was getting it out in 15 seconds. Don't tell me everyone else sticks to 15 seconds. Well, Surely they not. do. They're very good. Well, I'm going to start going to watch from I now was, on. I was 15, 20 tournament. seconds at a push you can oh. have. Um, well, you're through. doesn't matter what you score. Thank Fabulous you. score from Jackie in the first pass. What would you like to go for? Do you want to talk us through the board, even? No, I think that's a razor bill. No, I might be completely okay. wrong. Okay, is that the one you want to go no, for? No, 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 I'm just chatting. And uh, 15 <laughs> seconds, good luck with that. And zebra is obviously a, a, a sort of a... That's an easy one. Um, should we just go for safety uh, zebra or should we go razor bill? Because it doesn't really matter, does it? Are we OK? Are we You're doing fine. Why not go yeah. razor bill? Cool one. Let's go edgy. Razor, razor bill, bill, come on. Uh, let's see. Uh, how many of our 100 people said razor bill? No red line, because you are through. Razor bill is right. Oh. And it's a great answer. Oh. Look at that. To 21, takes your total up to 31. Our lowest score of the round. I've had a few low scores in mid-time. <laughs> Very well played, Anton. There's a couple of pointless answers up there. Um, the, um, that penguin is not a pointless answer. Oh. It's an Adelie penguin. Adelie. Apparently. Mm. It's a beautiful photograph. But it scored five Sweet. points. Sweet. Is that one a striped skunk? Yeah. It is a striped skunk. Uh. Yeah, absolutely right. Um, it would have scored you 17 points. Oh. I mean, you're through anyway, so no, it's OK. I was just curious about it was, that uh, Now, the, the, the G... Yeah. That looks very like someone I know. I can't think who it is. <laughs> <laughs> oh. That is very well done if you knew this at home. It's a type of monkey, obviously. It's a Guaretza. That's a pointless answer, Guaretza, sure. it is a pointless answer. This is your other pointless answer. Uh, <laughs> the, uh, no, that's a zebra. Uh, it would have scored you 76 points. I think I know that one, Richard. Um, it's a Holstein Friesian cow. Is it a Holstein Friesian is, cow? Yeah. No. Absolutely wow. right. Wow. Well done. Quite wow. answer. There we are. Uh, thank you very much indeed, Richard. Uh, so that brings us to the end of our first round. Oh, no. Lauren and Emma. No. I'm so sorry. <laughs> Emma and Lauren, thank you so much. <laughs> right, for the remaining three pairs, it is now time for round two. Very well done, everybody. We've made it through black and white animals. Best of luck to all three pairs. Our category for round two this evening is... On-screen characters. Can you all decide in your pairs who's going to go first and who's going to go second? OK, and the question concerns... TV villains. Oh. Oh. Richard. You know On each board, we're going to show you the names of six TV villains, uh, the actor who first played them and the year they first appeared. Can you tell us which shows they appeared in, please? Thank you very much indeed. Our first board of six TV villains is this. Villanelle, Jodie Comer, 2018. Jim Moriarty, Andrew Scott, 2010. Nina Myers, Sarah Clark, 2001. Nick Cotton, John Altman, 1985. Aunt Lydia Clements, Anne Dowd, 2017, and Nellie Olsen, Alison Angrim, 1974. Anton. Yes. What are you going to go for? Um, oh, I'm going to have to go with the top one. Killing Eve. Killing Eve. Villanelle, yeah. Killing Eve. Let's see how many of our 100 people agree with Anton. Killing Eve. It's right. Down he goes to 43. Wow. It's not bad. That's 43. Yeah, I thought it was very Yeah, so it's a good answer on a tough board, that, um, I would say. No, Jodie Comer came along to an episode of Strictly once in 2018 and a lot of Twitter were fearing for uh, Tess Daly's life when they, uh, when they saw her <laughs> in the audience. She was there in the background. Thank you very much indeed, Richard. Richard, yeah. what are you going to go for? Hmm. I'm not very good on the telly. I so want to know the 1974 one, but I so don't. Oh, I thought you'd know that. Well, I think I... I think... I'm, it's just tantalisingly out of reach. I think I'll go for Jim Moriarty um, from Sherlock. Jim Moriarty, Sherlock, says Richard. Let's see how many of our 100 people said Sherlock. Sherlock is right. Look at that. Down it goes to 21. <laughs> 21 for Sherlock. 
Yeah, he plays a villain in uh, in the Bond film Spectre as well, Andrew Scott. And that's why he took the role as the, the priest in Fleabag. He said, I want to stop playing villains. Thank you very much indeed. Annika, talk us through this board. Oh, yes. Why well, not? Is Aunt Lydia um, Handmaiden's Tale? And then Nick Cotton, EastEnders. And the others haven't a clue, Your Honour. So I'm going to go Handmaid's Tale. Handmaid's Tale for Aunt Lydia. Let's see if that's right. Let's see how many of our 100 people said Handmaid's Tale. Oh, God. Handmaid's Tale is right. 43 is our high score, 21 is our low. You pass the high, you pass the low. Oh, down to four. Oh, wow. Very well done indeed. Very strong on the far podium. Very well played, Annika. Yeah, one of the one of the cattle prod wielding um, aunts in that uh, in the book and in the, the TV series. Four points. Very very good answer. Now, um, Nick Cotton is the biggest scorer there. EastEnders, of course, would have scored you sixty nine points. These other two are fairly low scorers at the bottom. Nellie Olson from nineteen seventy four. Do you know that one? No. Little House on the Prairie. Oh, it's Little House oh. on the Prairie. Is that what that is? A Little House on the Prairie. Apparently, yeah. Nellie Olson was one of them. <laughs> yeah. chief, chief amongst them. Five points. The best answer on the board, Nina Myers. It's a really long-running show. 24? It was 24. Yes. Oh. Exactly right, 24. Oh, very good. good. Best first, answer on the board as well, Jackie. Three ah. points for that. Thank you very much indeed. It's a tricky round, this one. Let's have a look at those scores for the best score of the past. Very well done, Annika. 21's where we find Luba and Rich, and then 43 for Anton and Jackie. Little bit ahead there, but Jackie, yeah, if we can have some of that 24-like knowledge on the next board, that will even things up. But we're going to come back down the line now. Let's put six more TV villains up on the board, and here they are. We have got Marlo Stanfield, Jamie Hector, 2004, Alexis Carrington, Joan Collins, 1981, Thomas Barrow, Robert James Collier, 2010, Geoffrey Baratheon, Jack Gleason, 2011, Richard Hillman, Brian Capron, 2001, and DCI Roz Huntley, Tandy Newton, 2017. There we are, Sinetra. Hello. How do we like this board? I feel really nervous because I'm working with Robert James Colley at the moment and I don't know <laughs> who he played in 2010. So sorry, Rob, but I'm going to play it safer and say Line of Duty, DCI, Ros Huntley. Line of Duty. Yeah. OK, let's see how many of our 100 people said Line of Duty. Here is your red line. Oh, that's good, Sinatra. Very well done indeed. Down it goes to 19, takes your total up to 23. You're very comfortably through. Great answer, Sinatra. Well played. And we will uh, we will discover the secret of Rob at the end of this round. Um, <laughs> okay. Yes, a brilliant villain in, uh, in Line of Duty. They've had some great villains in that. Mm. And uh, she was chief among them. Such a good actor. Uh, now then, Luba. Yes. Luba, how are you feeling about this board? I'm feeling um, interesting because I have no idea even one name on that board. I don't know them. I would say The Crown, because I watched it. I just finished um, last night, The Crown. It was wonderful series. So I say The Crown. To which one? With, um, which one I pick? Most recent, the 2011. OK, the... 2011. Joffrey Baratheon. Yes. From The Crown. Well, let's see. I get a hungry point. Let's <laughs> see. Uh, there's your red line. Let's see what happens when we say The Crown for Joffrey. I'm so sorry. I'm so sorry, Luba. Well, that I'm puts sorry. you in a very sorry. difficult position. Um, scores you 100 points, takes your total up to 121. I mean, you've just given a TV executive a very, very good idea, actually. <laughs> that'd be, uh, yeah, wow. that'd be amazing. That not? It's not that, Luba, that's so hard. And it, uh, British TV is one of those things. It's, uh, it's, a, it's a tough round to come up. It's not general yeah. knowledge. It's uh, very specific. I mean, if I were being tested on Russian television, I would probably only get about a third of them. <laughs> <laughs> um, thank you very much indeed. OK, now then, Jackie, there you are on 43. 77 or less is your target. Um, do you feel like talking us through that board and filling in the blanks? Um, I don't know the top one. Um, Alexis Carrington was in Dynasty. Um, I don't know who Thomas Barrow was. Richard Hillman is in, was in... Uh, Coronation Street. I'm going to go with Alexis Carrington Dynasty. Dynasty, says Jackie. Dynasty, OK. Here is your red line, lovely and high. Can we get below that with Dynasty? Let's find out. It's right, and you're through. Phew. 
with room to spare. 49. Well, Very well done indeed. 92 oh. is your total. Well done, Jackie. She was the third actor to be offered that role. The two people who turned down the role of uh, Alexis Carrington, Sophia Loren, turned it down, and then Elizabeth Taylor Whoa, turned it down. Really? Yeah, can you imagine? Um, now, Joffrey uh, is not from The Crown. Perfectly good guess. He's Game from of Thrones. Game of Thrones. It's a kind well, of crown of its which own. Which is exactly that. 24 points. Richard Hillman, you're right, Jackie, was from Corrie. He would have scored you 40. Um, Marlo Stanfield, fans of The Wire, will know oh. that one and would have scored you one point. Now, poor uh, Robert James Collier. Robert James you know, Collier? He wasn't a villain in Downton. He was a really good person in Downton. Started. He started as... Started as a villain, though. He started as a villain. He, he did. was troubled. He, he, he troubled. started as a villain and became a much-loved character. Yeah, much-loved character. But it was, uh, it was it was downturn and would have scored you seven points. Thank you very much indeed. OK, so at the end of our second round, we have to say goodbye to one of our pairs, Luba and Richard. I'm so sorry. Oh. sorry. It is you we have to say goodbye to with your high score of 121. That was so unfair. Luba, pointless as you won. Lovely to have you here. Thank you so much. Thank um, you. Richard and Luba. But for our two remaining pairs, it's now time for our head-to-head. Congratulations, Sinetra, Annika, Anton and Jackie. You are now one step closer to the final and a chance to play for our jackpot, which currently stands at £2,500. <laughs> this is the bit, though, where we have to decide who's going to go through to the final and play for that money. And we do it by making you go head-to-head. -head. Oh. But from now on, you can play as a pair. Yes. So you're allowed to confer before you give your answers. Um, yeah, and the first pair to win two questions will be playing for that jackpot for their charities. Well, best of luck. To both pairs. Let's play the head to head. Here is your first question, and it concerns songs that strictly winners dance to. Yes! <laughs> Just hello. Richard. We're going to play you five songs now. They're all the original versions of songs that the strictly winners dance to in the final. Can you tell us the artist who had hits with these songs, please? Oh, okay. Okay, here is song A. Here's B. Why don't you all fail with it? Don't try and dig what we all say. Big sensation. Who danced to it? Here's C. Here is E. OK, there we are. So, Sinatra and Annika, you are our low scorers. You're our golden couple. You get to go first. OK, we're going to... We have conferred and we have decided we're going to go for D, Bill Withers. Ain't no sunshine. D, Bill Withers. Yeah, yeah. D, Bill, Bill Withers. So, Anton and Jackie, it's yeah. overdue. Do you want to talk us through all of them? Uh, well, yeah, if you like. Um, <laughs> the first one is Elton John. Second one was... Um, the Who. The Who. Third one we think potentially could be Aerosmith. Mm. It's Steve Tyler. He was no, Aerosmith, so No, I don't think it is. The last one's Take That. We disagree about C. Interestingly Ooh. enough, I think that could be the winning one. Elton, no, The Who, or Take That. Elton. Be The Who, wouldn't it, out of those three? Or Take That. No, everyone knows no. Take That. The Who, then. You're going to go for The Who? B. For B. OK, so we have Bill Withers, we have The Who. Um, Sinatra and Annika went for Bill Withers for D. Let's see if that is right. Let's see how many people said it. 
It is Bill Withers. And down it goes to 18. That's a good score. Meanwhile, Anton and Jackie have gone for the who, for B. Let's see how many of our 100 people said the who. The who is right. Oh. Down to 38. <laughs> 38, well done, Sinetra and Annika. After one question, you're up 1-0. Yeah, Bill Withers, best possible answer, so very well played there. So, A, you're quite right, was, uh, let's have a little listen, was Elton John. What a score, you 68. Jill was... Halfpenny. Jill Halfpenny, absolutely right, in Series 2. First person ever to score 40 for a giant. Darren Bennett was a player. And Darren Bennett, absolutely right. Um, B, uh, we know, was The Who. Do you know who danced to The Who? No, I don't. No, that was Jay and uh, Jay and Aliona. Oh, yes, of course. Uh, C, let's have a little listen. And that is... Guns and Roses. Guns and Roses. Oh, yes. Roses. Oh, yes. Roses. Guns and Roses. Would have scored you 44. It's a good job we did it. Uh, and that was Abby Clancy. Danced to, to that with Aliash. And the last one I think everybody knew was... Take That. Uh, Would have scored you 48 points. So the who was the right one to go for, the ones you knew, but uh, you couldn't have beaten Bill Withers very well played. Well done. Thank you. Well done. And Lewis Smith danced to that with Flavia. Thank you very much indeed, Richard. Well, here comes your second question. Anton and Jackie, you get to answer it first, but you have to win it to stay in the game. So good luck. Our second question this evening is all about... Famous people wearing top hats. Richard. <laughs> Five pictures now, famous people wearing top hats, but who are these people? OK, who are the people beneath the hats? And we have got... A. B. C. D. And E. OK. Anton and Jackie, what are you going to go for? Far away, Captain. We're going to go for B, Cara Delevingne. B, Cara Delevingne. B, Cara Delevingne. Now then, Sinetra and Annika, <laughs> over to you. Talk oh, us through that board, if you can. Well, we were going to go with Cara. Um, a has got Quan. C is Philip Schofield. Don't know D. And E is Mo Farah. So, do we think A? Do A. a. Yeah. Got one. You're going to go for Gok One. So we have Cara Delevingne and we have Gok One. Um, Anton and Jackie went for Cara Delevingne. Let's see if that is right for B. How many people said it? It is right. And down that goes to 20. Very good indeed. 20 for Cara Delevingne. Let's find out what Gok scores. The wonderful Gok One. Let's see how many of our 100 people said that. Gok is right. Oh. Much more recognisable. 67 for Gok. Well done, Anton Jackie. Just what we needed. You're back in the game. After two questions, it's one all. Yeah, as well played. Quite hard to beat Cara Delevingne there. There is an answer up there that would have done it. That is Cara Delevingne at Princess Eugenie's wedding. C is Philip Schofield, of course. He would have scored you 83. Uh, and Mo Farah would have scored you 61. D is the answer that would have uh, obviously scored the points. It's the actor, she's in The Walking Dead, she's in the, the Avengers movies as well, and it's uh, Denai Guerrera. Very well done if you said that. Denai Guerrera would have scored you one point. Thank you very much indeed, Richard. OK, now here comes your third question. Whoever wins this one goes through to the final and plays for that jackpot for their charities. Our third question is all about UK city centres. Richard. Uh, yes, uh, very specifically, we're going to show you the names of five UK cities now, but only the centre of each word. We've removed the first two and last two letters from each one. So what are these cities, please? OK, let's that? reveal our city centres. Here they come. We've got... R-T-S-M-O-U, T-T-I-N-G-H, L-F-A, I-N-B-U-R and C-H-F-I-E. There we are. So, Sinatra and Annika will go first. Yeah, we're going to go for it. We're going to go for Belfast. You're going to go for Belfast in the middle there. OK, now, Anton and Jackie, talk us through the board. We think it's Portsmouth at the top, then Nottingham, then Edinburgh. The last one, we're going to go for Lichfield. Lichfield. So we have Belfast and we have Lichfield. Sinatra and Annika have gone for Belfast. Let's see how many of our 100 people said Belfast. 
Belfast is right. It's a lovely low score. That goes down to 11. Very well done indeed. 11 for Belfast. Oh, Anton and Jackie, meanwhile, have gone for the bottom one. Litch. If it is, a, if it is. I, I think it's, I'm not sure if it's a city. I'm not sure it's spelled correctly. But there Let's you go. see. Litchfield. <laughs> Let's find out how many of our 100 people said Litchfield. Oh. Litchfield is right. Now, ooh, no. 35. 35 of our people. <laughs> got Litchfield, and that means very well done indeed. Sinatra and Annika, you are through to the final. After three questions, 2-1. Uh, yeah, the best two answers on the board as well. So, very well done. Oh. Couldn't have beaten Belfast. Couldn't have beaten them. Portsmouth would have scored you 88. 94 for Nottingham. And 71 for Edinburgh. Thank you very much indeed. So, the pair well, leaving well. us at the end of the head-to-head -head round. Anton and Jackie, oh. that was very close. Thank you so much for playing, playing so well. Please come and play again. Anton and Jackie. Thank you. But for Sinetra and Annika, it's now time for our pointless fun. <laughs> Congratulations, Sinetra and Annika. You are now here in the final. You have fought off all the competition and you have won our coveted pointless trophy. You now have a chance to win our pointless jackpot for your charities. And at the end of today's show, the jackpot is standing at £2,500. In many ways, you're in control, because we put four things up there and you get to choose one. Here we are, four things to choose from. Subsequent careers of the magnificent seven stars. <laughs> Don't worry, there are three more. Sweet entertainment. Maybe. That's fun. Tap dancing musicals in the West End. Maybe. Maybe. <laughs> and in between things. If we had to truly choose one, I would go for in between things because okay, it sounds just so vague. It sounds... Let's do that. Are you thinking in between things? Yes. Okay, let's go for in between things. Okay, very best of luck. Three completely different areas here, so hopefully at least one of these will suit you and you can focus on okay. that. We're looking for any of the following things, please. We're looking for any chemical element that comes alphabetically between uh, bromine and mercury. We are looking for any book of the Bible that comes between Exodus and Ezekiel, actually in the Bible, not alphabetically. Uh, or we are looking for any country of the world which uh, comes alphabetically between Guinea-Bissau and Papua New Guinea, as always by country, I mean a sovereign state that's a member of the UN in its own right. Very best of luck. Thank you very much indeed. As always, you've got up to a minute to come up with three answers. All you need to win that jackpot for your charities is for just one of those answers to be pointless. Are you ready? Uh as will ever be. Go on, let's put 60 seconds up on the clock. There they are. Your time starts now. OK, so can it's... I say one thing before I forget it? I think there's a country called Narrow, which ends O U, which is. Yes. Have you I heard think of there it? Is. Where is it? It's a country that's hardly ever talked about, but I think I... it is a country, but it might not if be. If it what... is, let's go there on holiday. Art. Random. Go on. Bible, um, Genesis, Exodus, Deuteronomy. So, I've no idea. Um, I mean, I went to a convent and I should really know, but I don't. Uh, Exodus, Ezekiel. Letters. Letters is a book of the Bible. Chemical. Where as a, as a keel comes. I would just, uh, for me, countries is the easiest. Kazakhstan. Um, Kuala Lumpur, it's obvious. Uh, it's got me country, so... Uh, um, uh, G Haiti? Just, Haiti? Haiti is... Haiti, narrow, whatever that country Haiti's is. Haiti is very good, one. actually. Um, G. Let's start so, with G. Mm. Ten seconds left. Uh, what are we going to go for? Do you want another country? J. Java. Is that a country or a city? city? Indonesia? Do you want to go for Indonesia? Okay. Would people go for that? OK, that Ooh. is your time up. <laughs> Let's have your answers, three oh. answers. What are you going to go for? I think you're on fire with our... Do you think we go countries? Yes. Haiti? Haiti. Yeah, definitely Haiti. Big guess, Nauru. Nauru, which we Nauru. think is going to catch Nauru. on. Is yeah, an Nauru. destination. And what was the other one? Did we say Kazakhstan or did we have an Indonesia? Which one do you think will be less? You say, Annika. Which one do you feel? Indonesia, then. Indonesia. OK, so there we are. We've got our three answers. Of those three, which is your best shot at a pointless answer? Nauru. Nauru we put last. Least likely to be pointless? Indonesia. Indonesia. Yeah. We put Haiti in the middle. OK, well, let's put those answers up on the board in that order, then, and here they are. We have got... Indonesia, Haiti, Nauru. If one of these were to turn out to be pointless and win you that jackpot, which charities are you playing for? Sinetra, you first. Um, I'm playing for Severa, which is a wonderful charity that looks after victims of honour abuse. 
Very good indeed. Annika? Romanian challenge appeal, because it's more or less 30 years to the day today when we went out to Romania on that original challenge and thousands of volunteers are still involved with those kids who are now in their 30s. Wonderful. <laughs> Two wonderful charities there. Let's look at your answers and see if we can find a pointless answer among them so you can take that jackpot back to your charities. Indonesia was your first answer, the least confident one. In all three cases, we're looking for countries to be found alphabetically between Guinea-Bissau and Papua New Guinea. Let's see how many of our 100 people said Indonesia. Is it pointless? Indonesia's right. If it goes all the way down to zero, £2,500 will be going to your charities. Down we go. Oh, I'm so Through the team. Oh, I'm so nervous. Oh, Into no. single figures. Still going down. Still going down with Indonesia. Look at oh, that. Down to God. two. <laughs> That's a brilliant answer. Sadly, not pointless. So let's turn to your second answer, Haiti. If Haiti is pointless, £2,500 goes to your charities. Uh, how many people said Haiti? Again, it's right. Now, Indonesia took us down to two, for goodness sake. Where is I'm Haiti going to take us? Him. Is this going to be the pointless answer we need? Down we go, we're into the single figure. Oh, wow. seven for Haiti. Interesting. 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 Right, we're okay. hitting everything on now, Nauru. Now, this one came to you very early in the minute. Let's see how many of our 100 people said Nauru for £2,500. Is it pointless? <gasps> it's right. Oh my God. Nauru <laughs> is right. Oh my God. Oh my God. Your first answer was Indonesia took us down to two. No, don't. Your second answer was Haiti took us down to seven. Okay. Nauru now takes us down, passing seven, oh. still going down, passing two. You've done it very well, done indeed. <laughs> Congratulations. Oh. Nauru is a pointless answer, which means you are taking home that jackpot of £2,500 for your charity. Well done. How about that? Uh, where did Nauru come from? Do you know what? So my sons are doing GCSE geography and randomly, you know, been testing their arm stuff and I just vaguely remember oh, seeing it and nice. that's not... I can't believe... I, I'm speechless. That's why you should always do your geography revision, shouldn't you? Uh, what's his name? Noah. Well done, Good. Noah. Good Noah. Work. Thank you, Noah, <laughs> so much. Turns out he wasn't doing the revision, it was you. Uh, beautifully done. And you know what? Kazakhstan would have been a pointless answer as well. No, to Kazakhstan. So, yeah, no. so very nicely done. Let's take a look at the pointless answers in the different categories. We will start with the elements. Loads and loads of pointless answers. Here is a few. Curium, gallium, krypton, manganese. Uh, these books are the Bible. Uh, Ecclesiastes, Ezra, Proverbs, Song of Solomon, and loads and loads of um, countries. Nauru is a particularly uh, a good, obscure one, but you could also have had Kazakhstan, Lebanon, Malta, Pakistan as a pointless answer. Very well done if you said one of those at home, particularly if you're Noah, uh, and congratulations <laughs> in the studio as well. Brilliant work. Thank you very much indeed, Richard, and thanks once again to our winning players, Sunetra and Annika, who take away today's jackpot of £2,500 for their charities. <laughs> Join us next time when we'll be putting more obscure knowledge to the test on pointless celebrities. Meanwhile, it's goodbye from Richard. Goodbye. And it's goodbye from me. Goodbye. <laughs>